software engineer at Cloud Factory. Uh, this is a personal experience uh, of mine. Uh, and uh, when I was building this, uh, when I was uh, trying to convey the messages that I, that I experienced, it was quite difficult. And one of our senior managers told me that this is your title and this is what you can express. So it was something that I always wanted to say and because uh, failure is something that we do not associate our uh, career with. Like we have quite a lot of failures, but we don't tend to look into them and only focus on the success side. But this is something different. We, I want to look at the uh, failures and let's see what we can learn from it. So learning from a postmodern. So postmodern is very new world. Right? So when we heard, hear the word postmodern, it's, it's kind of a very scary thing that uh, it brings chills to. And in software engineering, I see this man's face. So when we talk about postmodern, and uh, the reason is that we, in the postmodern, we discuss about failures and why that happened. And that is something we don't really think that way, especially in the Netflix culture, we don't think. Failure is very well. So it's it's quite a scale yeah, at the first. So what postmodern really is, is the retrospective process in which we look back on the why the failures were there, what were the good things that we can take from there, and so on. <coughs> and also look into the failures and uh, also understand what are the things that can be mitigated uh, in future as well, in other projects as well. There are also things that can be learned from there. So who actually does the most modern? You'll be quite surprised that most of the big companies like Microsoft, Google, and then Apple do them. It's because the failure is that it's everywhere. So talking about failures, so how do you reach the failure? So there are lots of things, hits that we do, and often missed all of them. It's quite unusual. But the requirements were quite complex in our context. It was always changing. And there was the uh, concept of new technologies that we we're trying to build on, which was not which we were not comfortable with. And experimenting with a big piece was was always a difficult task to do. So the timeline of uh, what we discussed. So in December 2016, uh, the project was uh, the project discussion initiated. So that was the first time that uh, it was just only I think around eight or nine months since I was uh, since I started my career. So that was that was quite early in my career. So this was a big project, uh, and we started the development in February. And we worked really hard. In the May of 2017, we made the first department, which apparently didn't go, didn't go well. We had to roll back. And then there was another one, and it didn't go well. And again, in July 2017, we made the third department, which obviously didn't go well. And we had to roll back. And that was the first time we did the retro. And there was quite, a, quite some time uh, before we did the final postmortem in 2018, February. So that was six, seven months. So at the first setting at the postmortem, it was my first experience. So working on some of the brilliant minds at Cloud Factory, just starting your career, I think that was the biggest opportunity that I had. And also after six months of development and everything, testing, trying to deploy it in production, but not being able to land it. So that was quite some quite a heavy thing to accept the failures. So at the first event, so people's face were like this. Everyone was angry. They were angry, they were angry, they were frustrated. It's because the failure they had to accept it. And for me, it was personally very difficult to accept it because I had worked, and it's just been a year 
of my career and I spent six, more than six months and I had to accept a failure. I had to, I had to face a failure and that was one of the biggest uh, thing that biggest experience of my life and that was quite frustrating for me. I wanted to learn, I wanted to grow, I wanted to succeed but the first thing that I face is a failure and that was quite difficult to take. So in the first post postmodern, what I felt was everyone was uh, pointing fingers. That's that's a human nature, right? So if I if a team does something and it doesn't go well, so we the human nature is to point fingers at you didn't do this, you didn't do that. So that was what was happening in the, at the first, and it was quite uh, demoralizing for me. And the people who were the point getting point. Fingers pointed at, they were defensive, I did not do this, I did not do that, you did not help me. There was the things that I, that we can, I think we all can associate it, right? And next is, for me personally, I was feeling frustrated because a lot of, I put a lot of effort and it didn't go well. I was feeling a certain kind of strain that I, I was not being able to meet up meet to the expectations of my managers, to my peers, and it was quite embarrassing feeling that I had. And it's quite, and still to the day, it's quite difficult to digest that. And the most difficult thing being in that meeting was being critical of oneself. I was critical of myself, and I did not do anything. But I was not able to meet my expectation, and that was the biggest uh, feeling that I have till date, and I think that's the feeling that makes my heart very heavy. It did back then. So, what did people say? These are the exact words. So, some people blame that experience was not available at their hand, and some people said we wanted a very big piece, but we did very little preparation, and another one said. It's diffi very difficult to complete a project with a very difficult scenario. But right? this is this is something that we hear, I think, in every project. So how is it to ask it? For me, it was an epic fail. Now. Let's fast forward to six months. So after July, so we just fast forward to six months. It's around December, and then we we had set the deadline. And what changed was the deadlines. So at first it was 31st December, which didn't go well. It was 15th then, then we had 31st, then we had 20th, then it was time to wrap up. So at the last postmodern, this was my exact feeling when I, was, when I moved into the meeting room. So I was like really scared. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to expect. From, the, from my past experience, it was so difficult to even look at the people's face. And now I had to face that again. But what people said now, this completely changed. So the first thing that a person spoke in the meeting was, I think of a pain. I think we did not spend too much time in the proper configuration. I, I think we did not communicate well. I think we did not look at the big picture that we should have looked into. And make the and just and look back where we are in, in terms of the project. So this this thing was very difficult for me to see. At first, people were blaming each other and now it completely changed. I don't know what changed. I, I still didn't know how to react. And when I try to look into it, so these are the three three R's that I think made people say what they said. First is regret. So they know that this is not going, this is something that they put effort into, but it's not going to go in somewhere, so we have to stop it. And the second is reason. So why it happened? 
what what are the things that we do did well, what are the things that we did not do well, and what is the remedy? What are the actionable items that we can uh, focus into? So what are the things that we focused on was what are the things that we missed on planning? What are the things that we could have done better in designing and POC? And what is the what are the things that we could have done better in the field? So those three things determine the, the expressions that people had. And it was quite different for me. So what it meant for me as a developer? First of all, I looked into what worked. Almost everything worked. What did not? I don't know. I actually don't know what did not work. So, did I fail? That was the biggest question that I had. So actually, did I fail as a that over in not being able to push that product that was supposed to solve half of our problems, but it didn't. So did I fail? Or did we fail as a So that was the question that's, it's very difficult to answer, right? I think almost every one of us here have gone through these phases that I have gone through. And from this, what did I learn? At first, I thought my career was like this. I thought I was running a race. But after I started, after gaining some distance, I fell. So the person that fell, I feel that that person was me. But was it really? No. The thing that I learned was, the, the most important thing that I would say, is that I learned to accept that not everything that I build will land ever into production. Because there will always be some cases that I can never uh, avoid. It's also because that and sometimes you will do everything right, it will go to 99.9%, but that 0.1% it will never get done. And that and that might be the sole reason that you the work that you have put into the effort that you have put into it will not be justified. And you should know when to call it a day. You just have to save yourself, you just have to save your team. And you just should know when to stop. And next one is going up to the responsibility, but avoiding the self critical part. So that was one of the biggest uh, lessons that I've heard. I think it's uh, at the very start of my career that I got to experience this failure. And uh, the things that I wound up. That was quite, quite a, uh, I'd say, life-changing event for me. I did not know that I was capable of doing things that I did. And when I look back, I think that are, those are the things that I simply did not look past, did not look at, or simply look past into. And next is making peace with failures. Some of us take the failures at very really, uh, deeply. And that is a very difficult thing to do. I think it's the most simplest thing to do, but making peace with it is a very difficult thing to do. And it's uh, really important to make peace with the failures because that's the only way that you can uh, learn from it and move forward. So what more? So we always say that, learn from mistakes, do this, do that. But what we often look, don't look into is, we don't make it actionable. So that is the problem that we have. And for me, it was the same. I said that I was learning from my mistakes, but I could not make it actionable. So it was not helping me in any way. So that was the thing that I learned. So whenever, even now, when I, whenever I'm 
face a failure. I just tried some of the things that I can, I could have done better. And I do, I try to measure myself onto the things that I know. So that gives me actionable items and what I think I want. Done better. Next is moving on. I think we should move on from the projects that we do, put our, put our efforts in, and sometimes it is not going to production, sometimes we have to face the failures, but you have to learn to move on. But that is something that we developers don't really do well. We like the hang of it, we like the hang of the project that we are involved so much in. Alas, finding wins and failures. I think this is something that we never do. We will seldom do. I think we will barely do it. Even in my team, when we are working on something, we actually don't find wins and failures. We don't find wins in anything. We just want to complete the project and that success is our win. But the things that we go through during that process, we never take it as win. And that's, uh, that's something that I have learned to finding small, small wins, small, small packets of happiness, that I call it, in everything in I, I do, every wins, every failures. That's it. Thank you.